the abolition of the famous or infamous that's a matter of perspective away goals rule is the main novelty of the fresh European football season along with the inception of the strange conference league. The rule that has been introduced more than 55 years ago in an attempt to avoid the proverbial third game's tiebreakers and all this time was part and parcel of the process now is cancelled and gone. For better or for worse, it remains to be seen. The purpose of this video is to observe and evaluate how the away goals affected the show during the last decades. Let's take as a reference point the 1980s, when football on a club level started to take roots on TV and therefore gave us enough footage to analyze. As you may see, I gathered all the cases when this rule was influential in all three big biggest clubs competitions, barring the preliminary rounds. It would be fair to say that back at the time, the vast majority of teams, including best ones, had basically two completely different faces, playing at home and away at the international stage. Real Madrid of the middle 1980s are the prime example of it. The famous team that has been indomitable and irresistible at native soil was simply unrecognizable, being far away from the Santiago Bernabeu stadium. Leave alone the lesser sites, which started to panic just thinking about an upcoming trip. There were four different reasons why the stratification was enormous. Two of them are perennial, inconvenience of traveling and hostile atmosphere at the opponent's turf. As for the third one, it may seem odd now, but 30-35 years ago, in the conditions of lack of information and knowledge, Every game against an adversary from a different country was like an, an uncharted territory and players during these events felt themselves a stranger in a strange land. No wonder that most of the coaches opted for an extra cautious and purely defensive tactics facing an uncertainty and knowing that they would be forced to study an opponent directly on the field. The low quality of vast majority of pitches in the 1980s is the reason number four, bearing in mind that it would be tough to keep the ball and combine on the bumpy and cloggy ground, many sides settled solely for a destructive mode and simply tried to kill time in a way game, bearing in mind that it's a trend and nobody would criticize them for this approach. The table started to slowly but gradually turn in the late 1980s and the early 1990s. The great AC Milan of Arrigo Saki paved the way for the rest proving that it's feasible to play actively and decisively away from home, even against strong opponents. Although the Rossoneri's road record numerically wasn't exceptional both in terms of wins and goals. Then, a little bit later, in the middle of 1990s, when football firmly established itself on TV, the lack of preparation to a concrete opponent was no longer a significant factor. Almost all the games of big clubs, not only important but also the regular ones, have been broadcasted worldwide and even the smaller teams now became much more prominent and easier to study and check. All this led to a drastic change of pattern. In the end of 1990s, the emphasis and diversity were more focused on the first and second legs and not on a venue. In the situation when the Champions League quarterfinal stage quietly became a place only for the rich and powerful clubs, the rates increased, 
Everybody were mindful of the opponent's strengths and weaknesses, and as a result, nobody wanted to risk in the first leg, knowing that it would be tough, almost impossible, to make a serious cushion, and everything will be almost inevitably decided in the return leg. The desire to not concede a goal and at least retain all the initial opportunities looking for the second match, even in the case of the home team in general, became much larger than the aspiration to trounce an adversary. 16 low-scoring affairs in 24 first-leg matches in the Champions League quarter-final between 1998 and 2003 is perhaps the most telling and eloquent stats. That's when the commentators all over the world started to underline tirelessly the worth of an away goal in the first game, because the goals itself turned into an absolute rarity. We strained with minor modifications and fluctuations, remained viable until the early 2010s when the wind of changes blew the other way. The effective removal of the passive offside, the constant rise of speed of play, and advanced ideas of attacking-minded coaches, specifically Jose Guardiola, Zinedine Zidane, Jurgen Klopp, and recently Hans Dieter Flick, made football much more attractive and spectacular game. And four or five years ago, the defensive approach suddenly went out of fashion and became ineffective, almost redundant. The significance and meaning of an away goal have been also modified. Instead of sacral tactical weapon and an ace up their sleeve, it transformed into means for maintaining intrigue, something very similar to NBA's 24 seconds clock, possession and three-point line. As long as every goal of this type costs as one and a half home ones, the trailing side that plays on the opponent's turf almost always keeps their chances, even being free now down. Tottenham's implausible but thoroughly real comeback against the nimble Ajax in 2019 is the perfect illustration of this idea. On the other hand, the away victories became almost a norm. We could also recall Juventus's exploits at the Santiago Bernabeu and Real's 2018 impressive playoff run, and it prompted fans, TV pundits and journalists to vociferously express the opinion that the away goals rule is a relic of the past and therefore should be annulled. To a certain point, they are not far away from the truth, especially in the last year and a half, when the pandemic effectively negated, or rather reversed, the home advantage. As for two reasons out of initial four I mentioned in the outset, only the issues related with traveling could be applied to the current realities. At the same time, and I want to reiterate, the away goals rule lately was more a source of excitement and unpredictability, something that adds spices to playoff format, and that's why I personally would be missed this unusual antique, even if it's dusty and archaic. And what about you?